The IDC confirmed that it has invested 1 billion rand in Top TV. Direct ownership figures published on On Digital Media's website shows that the IDC has an 11.13% stake. The NEF has a comparable stake of 10%, which cost 100 million rand. Investors also include empowerment groups such as First National Media and the Kosatu owned Red Gold Investments. We have to understand the modeling because what we did was IDC took a direct stake. In fact, now the percentage is a little bit different from that, but IDC took a direct stake. But in addition to that, we help fund other groupings because that's one of the other things was on the empowerment side. Because remember, this economy is a bit skewed. You still have the previous disadvantage. People not having access to capital, so therefore not being real players in the industry in terms of investment. But also, we pro provided in a debt, uh, a debt facility. Going forward, the IDC will look to the business plan practitioner for a course of action. So the process now is with the business plan practitioner. Uh, as a shareholder, because remember, the shareholder, as a shareholder, we've interacted with him. Uh, and uh, he, he now, in terms of the law, needs to help and find. I think the main thing is we have to find a, a partner, okay? So a technical partner. I think it's, it's, it's no secret. We have to find a technical partner. So, and that's what the business rescue practitioner is trying to do. I mean, within the powers that he has within the law, because he has to run us, and uh, we interact with him. I mean, we, we can do so much. We can't do any much further than that. The role of development finance institutions like the IDC is to provide risk capital where traditional investors might shy away. In 2009, the IDC invested in Top TV, but was enough due diligence done? The IDC felt that enough due diligence was done. We have done our work. I mean, you asked whether we've done a due diligence. We have done our work. We thought that there is a, a need for this. And if I look and I think there's still 150,000 active, that means there is a need. Maybe it's not as big as we thought it was or because how the present incumbent responded, that's another thing. But I would like to believe uh, with Top TV being there, uh, people have, have a wider choice than they had before. But if you also look at, uh, obviously, uh, it, uh, when somebody comes into your space, you have to respond. And we know MultiChoice has responded, has brought in other uh, uh, offerings as well to be able to respond to that. Yeah. Tech analyst Duncan McLeod pinned many of the problems down to Top TV strategies. Most of its woes are related to, I think, to, to poor strategic decisions. Uh, um, I, I think you, if, if you speak to the management and the shareholders there, you'll, you'll get a picture of, of, um, of a company that, that hasn't been at the top of its game. The operator has roughly half of the 350,000 monthly subscribers it needs to break even. Because the incumbent multi-choice has most of the exclusive sports rights and movie rights sort of sewn up already, uh, it kind of leaves only these sort of like other niche markets for the other existing ones, which at the moment is really only Top TV, even though there are three others who also have licenses but haven't started uh, to explore. And I think Top TV realized like if they want to get ahead in the market, that's only the, one of the only options that they really can pursue. The IDC has not been supportive of Top TV's adult entertainment venture. The issue of the adult inter entertainment, I mean, it's not something we support. I mean, we've said it to them, and but I mean, the management, they have to look at how best they, they try and address that. I mean, but we're engaging with them on a, on a different way, but it's not something that we support as IDC. Despite Top TV's efforts to sell adult TV as a saving grace, its future remains uncertain, especially as such proposals do not sit well with key investors. Panasha Chigumazi, Johannesburg.